Welcome to the Grad School Femme Touring Podcast. This is Dr. Yvette Martinez Vu, and I will be serving as your Femme Tour, providing you with tips and tricks and everything else you need to know to get into graduate school. For the past 10 years, I've been helping undergraduate students get into top graduate programs in their field, and I'm really excited to share this information with you too. Hello, hello, everyone. I have another episode for you, one of my bread and butter type episodes. It's all about strategies to help you exceed, not just meet your goals. I'm going to talk about three specific strategies. I, I'll just start by saying I absolutely love sharing productivity and organizational tools, tips, strategies, I get kind of excited, um, which is funny because I used to be a workaholic and, um, and I'd constantly be like working 24 seven until I got really sick and learned my lesson. And now I'm less of a workaholic, but um, one thing that happened when I had a baby was I realized, oh my goodness, I have a lot less time than I used to before. And the same is true now. I feel like I have a very limited amount of time. I have to be very intentional with how I use my time. And so maybe it's an obsession. I don't know, but I'm a big fan of finding tools, tips, strategies to help you be more productive and efficient with your time so that you can do, make sure you get things done um, and waste less time. <laughs> I don't know if any time is truly a waste, especially if you're resting, that's not a waste of time, but I am a big fan of sharing strategies that have helped me with getting things done with meeting my goals and so today I'm going to be talking about about goals and about how you can exceed your goals consistently and again without like overworking yourself burning yourself out just by trying out some of these strategies they might not all work for you but if one of the three works for you I would be more than thrilled to hear about that so let's Let's talk a little bit more about the three strategies. And then at the end, I am going to share a little bit more about my own updates with grad school fem touring, things that are coming up, things to look forward to, things that I'm um, going to be offering um, to continue to help you all out in your journey with uh, applying and navigating, um, managing, kind of getting through finishing your graduate programs. Okay, so first strategy is something that I call minimum and maximum goals. I actually, sometimes I, <laughs> over time I've, I've looked up and read several books about how to write your dissertation, writing your dissertation for 15 minutes a day, um, how to be more productive, how to be more efficient, whether it's reading articles or reading books. I've encountered several resources and sometimes I pick up on little tips and I'm not a hundred percent sure where I got it. So this is one of them where I know I've been doing this for a long time, setting minimum and maximum goals, and I'm not 100% sure where I got it from, but this is how it works for me. When I implement minimum and maximum goals, what does that mean? So I'm thinking about when you're setting weekly goals, what you want to ac accomplish this week. So it's the beginning of the week, you're going over your calendar, you're going over your to-do list, you're going over what you want or need to accomplish that week. And um, I, in grad school, I struggled a lot with my mental health. So there were weeks that I could get a lot done. I was having a good mental health week. And there were other weeks that I was lucky if I hardly got anything done, like just five minutes of something, 10 minutes of something, getting up and brushing my teeth. Those things, um, I was, I was just grateful to even like get up. So having said that and having struggled with depression and anxiety throughout graduate school, and you know, even now I constantly have to manage my mental health. I started developing minimum goals for what is the bare minimum that I can get done this week if I'm having a not so great week, if it's a not so great mental health week, if life happens, if there was an emergency, if, you know, several unfortunate circumstances popped up, what's the minimum that I can get done? 
sometimes the minimum is nothing. You, you just can't and you need to, the minimum that you need to do is communicate about what happened with the parties involved that are expecting you to do something. And that's your minimum is sending a few emails to communicate to say, I'm, this happened, I'm going to need an, an extension or I hope you can understand, et cetera. And then maximum goals refer to what's the absolute most I can get done in an ideal world if everything all you know perfect setting time energy levels no distractions no <laughs> no life no like unfortunate life circumstances coming up what's the most that you could get done without necessarily burning yourself out overworking yourself without running out of steam so minimum and maximum goals and then when i set minimum and maximum goals the, the other um, differentiation in terms of how I set them is that I make sure I set personal and academic goals. So you could say personal and professional. I know some folks don't like the word professional. Um, it could seem um, very, it just has a negative uh, association with it. So personal and academic goals. Why? Because I think it's important that you prioritize taking care of yourself and that it, that is also part of your goals. And so your minimum um, personal goal might be, I want to make sure that I take myself on a walk or a hike at least once this week. Um, I want to make sure I get out of the house or do something at least once this week. That's your minimum. Your maximum a uh, personal goal could be, I wanna make sure I go out and take a walk at least, um, three to four times this week. That's like, you know, if, if you feel like, oh, you know, if I'm doing good every other day, I could go out and take a walk. And that's good. That's, you know, something you look forward to doing. It's taking care of yourself. It's, it's a goal. And that will hopefully help you get to a bigger goal, which might be a fitness or um, athletic or some sort of kind of uh, health-based goal for yourself. Now, when it comes to the academic goals, that could be your minimum goal is make sure that I get through my classes and homework for this week. Uh, that's your minimum goal. Um, your maximum goal is get through the homework and also dedicate two to three hours towards my grad school apps. Because, you know, with your classes plus your grad school apps, that's as much as you can kind of take on in terms of your capacity. It could be anything. I mean, you could be a grad student and writing your dissertation and your minimum goal for the week, or you could also set minimum and maximum goals just to, and I'm, I'm going off track a little bit. You can do the minimum maximum goals per day too. So going back to the example of a grad student writing their dissertation, uh, that's one thing that I would do. I would set minimum and maximum goals per working session. So my minimum goal for a day is, let's say I was struggling that day, I'd say, okay, opening up my Word doc and free writing for five to 10 minutes straight. If I can just do that, if I can just confront my fear of writing, open up the, the, the computer and start just typing up my thoughts related to the topic or start note-taking related to the reading, um, that is the bare minimum. Five to 10 minutes is doable per day. Now, the more lofty goal is, let's say I had a three to four hour uh, chunk of time that week, is writing for those three to four hours. So the, the more lofty goal would be, okay, how long does it take me to write? If I already have all my notes ready, if I have an idea of an outline of what I need to write, this week, uh, maybe I can write a page an hour and I have four hours. So my, my maximum goal for that day would be write four pages. You see what I mean? So you can have the daily minimum maximum goals, you can have the weekly goal. So for that, that week, maybe my goal was write, uh, my minimum goal was to write two pages that week. And my maximum goal was to write eight pages that week. It really depends. Like initially it's, it can be hard because you might not know your pacing. You might not know how quickly you can get things done. Um, and some things are out of your control. Some deadlines are out of your control because you're taking classes. 
But over time, if you start to implement the minimum and maximum goals, especially if you're working on projects that are your own, where you're setting your own deadlines or where it's, it's a long-term project uh, or long-term goal, that will help you setting minimum and maximum goals so that you can continue to sustain momentum and not give up. The other thing I wanted to, to mention about minimum and maximum goals is that for them to be effective, you want to make sure that you're setting smart goals. I'm not sure if I've talked about smart goals on this podcast in the past. And to me, it seems like so um, apparent because I've known about smart goals for such a long time since, I don't know, maybe 15 years now. <laughs> that I'm like, of course, you're going to make specific, measurable, attainable, what, uh, what is it, um, time-driven goals. So what is SMART referred to? SMART is not just, oh, you know, set something that's SMART, duh. It's, it, it's, it's an acronym that refers to setting goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So you don't want to just make this lofty goal that's unrealistic. You also don't want to make a goal that's just so like far too easy for you. So for me, when I was struggling with my mental health, five to 10 minutes a day was huge. But maybe for you, you're like, oh, like no brainer. You could do that any day without even thinking about it. So you want to think about yourself. You want to think about your capacity. You want to think about your circumstances and then set goals that are specific, measurable, relevant to you. So just make sure, set SMART goals. If you Google SMART goals, there are a ton of free worksheets um, that will help you with setting SMART goals. Um, for the folks who are joining my grad school Femme Training Support Group, I am gonna provide them with a little um, kind of PDF that includes a goal setting sheet that, in that kind of incorporates a little bit of the SMART goals, incorporates the minimum, and the maximum goal setting exercise and a little bit of reflection too. So that's something that I created um, that helps me that I'm sharing with them. But again, you can find free goal setting, specifically smart goals worksheets online if you with a simple click of a button by Googling it. So minimum maximum goals is strategy number one. Okay, the second strategy to help you not just meet but exceed so i'm saying exceed because if you set minimum goals every week and maximum goals every week the the goal is not to reach the maximum every week the goal isn't to reach the minimum every week ideally you want to be in a happy medium so if you're in between the minimum and maximum goal and you're consistently meeting above the minimum maybe not completely at the maximum but a little bit over the minimum every week, you are exceeding your goals because your minimum is meeting it. And then in, anything over the minimum is exceeding it. So that's what I'm referring to when I say, I want you to help you develop strategies to exceed your goals consistently. I'm not trying to get you to meet the maximum every week because perhaps the maximum would be too much and then you would burn yourself out. And that we're trying to prevent, okay? We want this to be, sustainable so consistently over time for the rest of your life for you to be able to set your own personal professional academic life goals and then consistently be able to meet them while still enjoying your life okay strategy number two is creating a reward system and celebrating victories not just any victories celebrating small victories okay let me tell you a little bit more about what i mean by that so have you ever um, been around a little kid in elementary school and seen the sticker reward charts? Or do you recall yourself being in elementary, possibly even middle school, but most likely elementary school and having kind of reward charts uh, with stickers? Oh, you did well, here, you get a sticker. Or you got an A, here, you got a sticker on your, um, on your homework. That is a reward system. That's something to help you to stay motivated and to keep kind of doing well, whatever it is that, that, you, that your goal is to keep kind of consistently doing that. So when I was a grad student, I actually implemented a sticker reward system for myself. 
I, I mean, at that time, I was really into planners. I had a passion planner. I um, was a fan of kind of making it pretty and having stickers. And so every time that I would meet my minimum writing goal for the day, or if I'd have a to-do list, sometimes I'd handwrite my to-do list. I no longer handwrite to-do lists. I no longer use <laughs> written planners. Everything is digital for me now. But back then, I, I very much enjoyed pen and paper. And so I would write out all my to-dos. And every time, instead of just crossing out my, my to-do that I finished, I would give myself a sticker. Um, and I, I, you know, I would write down my to-dos on my planner. So then I'd have more stickers, decorate it more. And it just gave me so much satisfaction to make my planner look pretty. <laughs> so that was one example of a reward system that I implemented to keep me motivated in my dissertation writing. Now, I know of other people whose reward is to go to a local coffee shop and get themselves a tea or a coffee that week. So at the end of the week, if they you know, consistently met their goals and then they treat themselves to a beverage of their choice. Um, whatever it is that works for you, it could mean going somewhere, spending time with someone. What is a reward system for you that'll keep you motivated? And it doesn't necessarily have to involve spending money. I know that if you're um, a graduate student, you're likely not making a lot of money. If you're an undergrad, a lot of the undergrads that that I know that I've worked with have been working class. And so you don't have a lot of money to, to spend on things, but you do spend things on things that you find valuable and useful. And so if you know once a week or once a month you wanna treat yourself to something, there's no shame in that either. So just to figure out what is the reward system that works for you? Is it something where it's an experience that's kind of free or low, low cost? Is it an actual kind of tangible thing that you get like a sticker or um, a beverage or a supply or something that you're getting? Um, is it time with family, with a friend, time to watch a show? Whatever it is that you think that you can allow yourself to kind of earn every week. And it shouldn't be um, something that even if you don't meet your goals, you're still gonna do. It needs to be something that you, yeah, like, like I said, that you will earn, that you feel like you worked for it. So developing a reward system. And then I said, celebrate small victories. So I think that there's, there's a lot of emphasis in us celebrating big milestones. Like, oh my goodness, high school graduation, college graduation, like, yay, you know, the family comes, you, I don't know, <laughs> I'm like, what do people do in graduation? You get your leg and your flowers and you have a nice dinner, whatever it is that you do to celebrate. But not enough emphasis is, is spent on actually um, celebrating your small victories. So for me, my small victory this week is I'm getting a new website. I, I just, every, every person I talk to about my website, they could care less. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm assuming they could care, or they couldn't care less. And um, I'm so excited. I am so excited. It's going to be up and running um, next week. And I put a lot of time and effort into it. I invested into it. I hired a Black woman uh, who is a professional web designer to help me with it. I love that she's a mom of two. Like, I'm like, yes, let's just support all the good people doing good work. So it was a really amazing collaboration of being able to be intentional with what I want on my site from the colors to the style to the feeling I want others to have to what, what are my offerings. And um, to me, that's a celebration. I think that's a, a small victory. Am I, um, have I reached this huge milestone? Not necessarily, but it's still worth celebrating because I'm proud of it because I've put time and energy into it and so maybe you having a really good week and meeting your goals this week is worth celebrating so don't forget to kind of consistently celebrate yourself because if you don't do it no one else will so small victories small celebrations are really good because otherwise you know I don't think I did that enough in grad school and by the time that I graduated it just felt so anticlimactic like 
this was it. Like I clicked the button and then <laughs> to top things off when I found my dissertation, I clicked the button and then they dared to charge me. I was like, really? Like I just met this milestone and you're still charging me money. <laughs> so it just felt really womp womp, like really anticlimactic and um, made me really not even want to celebrate and I missed my graduation ceremony because I got sick that was sad <laughs> and then a few months later I think I realized like actually I I should I should be celebrating it's kind of a big deal to get a PhD and I went ahead and threw a big party with family um it was like my it was like the quinceañera I never had. So I never had a quinceañera. I never had a wedding ceremony. I eloped. I can talk about that another time. <laughs> so I never had any like big event to like celebrate myself. And so doing that a couple months after um, I filed and finished, um, completed my PhD, doing it with my family and my loved ones, my friends, that was really meaningful to me. You don't have to go all out, um, but what I want to stress is that it is important to celebrate yourself, to celebrate your victories, and to bring people along um, who, who are cheering you on. So the people that you surround yourself with are also very important in terms of celebrating. So for instance, like I have a small tight-knit circle of women of color friends who I go to, who I share my victories with. They share their mini victories with me. You know, we, we may do that on group me, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Instagram, on text message, just sending a quick message like, hey, today I did this one thing. I unsubscribed to X and it's a big deal for me. And I'm like, yes, that's awesome. That's great. You know, now like I'm going to do that too. So um, do that. Just make it a consistent kind of habit to celebrate yourself and celebrate those around you to keep you motivated and keep you going. Okay, third strategy for exceeding, not just meeting your goals, has to do with external forces <laughs> and other people. It's developing systems of accountability. So what are you gonna do to hold yourself accountable? Because sometimes uh, holding yourself accountable just to yourself is not enough. Um, that has been very true for me. I used to feel a little bit embarrassed that it was hard for me to get things done if I wasn't doing it with someone else. So what I mean by that, like it was hard for me to get my dissertation writing done if I wasn't meeting, you know, in writing groups or if I wasn't working with an accountability buddy or if I hadn't like booked a hotel room um, and knew, okay, I spent money on this hotel room. So now I really have to like finish my chapter this weekend. <laughs> so I always needed something, whether it was someone else or like putting money on it, like something that like, where I'm like, oof, like this, um, it'll hurt if I don't, if I don't get it done because that person is there, I want to waste their time. I don't want to waste their time. Well, because I put money on the line, I don't want to waste that money. Um, so let me give you another example of, of um, accountability and ways to hold yourself accountable. For me, exercise, consistently exercising has always been a struggle. Um, I don't have as much of a struggle with in terms of my nutrition, making sure that I have, you know, salads, smoothies regularly. That's not a problem for me. And it's not a problem for me because a fuerzas, like I just have to, because that's how I maintain my, my chronic illness. And I, I, I sustain myself and keep myself functional is based on the food that nourishes my body. But when it comes to exercise, it's a little harder. Sometimes if I exercise too much, I will get flare ups and not feel great. And so it's hard to maintain motivation to consistently exercise. And so what have I done in the past that has worked that I could probably do again now and it would work <laughs> it's um taking classes exercise classes like paying for a class would always force me to exercise because I'm like well I put money into it I paid for this class I might as well show up and get my money's worth that was one form of accountability is paying for something and then showing up to the class and then knowing that the people there are expecting to see me every week and I don't want to let them down so that helped me with accountability. 
Now, the other thing um, in terms of accountability is like, that's one of the reasons I created the grad school film touring support group is the folks that are gonna be joining me for the next eight weeks, they're paying a donation to be there every week. And then on top of that, they're making a commitment to me and to one another to show up consistently every week to help each other out. So now they've got that, that double kind of form of accountability where they've put money on the line and they've also kind of made a commitment to a group of people to show up and to get work done. So, you know, that's another example of a system of accountability to help you get work done. Um, I actually want to bring up another little bit of an anecdote. I remember hearing about one of my friends, I think it was her advisor or a friend of a friend's advisor. I don't know who it was, but what this advisor would do to make sure that her grad students would actually write their chapters and get it done on time was she would have them make a commitment of putting money on the line and a, a, a large enough amount that it would make them kind of think twice. Like, let's say maybe it was like $200 or $250. I'm just making it up. I don't know what the actual number was. And she would say, okay, if you don't turn in your chapter by X deadline, I'm going to make sure that you put $250 and donate it to your favorite charity. Okay, so what's your favorite charity? And so then the day of, they'd have a meeting, meet up in person, and she'd be like, okay, you didn't finish it now. Okay, let's go. Um, and then she would watch them as they made that donation. Now, I don't, I don't do that <laughs> with the people that I work with, but it's, it's the point is what form of accountability is going to work for you? What's going to make you take it seriously and, and, and what's, you know, gonna make it so that you consistently hold yourself accountable to meeting your goals and make sure that whatever goals they are, they are smart goals. They're not loft, too lofty. They're not too kind of bare bones that they're kind of achievable and realistic for you. So systems of accountability, having those implemented as part of, you know, your goal setting, whatever goal you're trying to achieve, it can, pers it can be personal, personal, it can be personal, it can be professional. Ideally, it's both, it's a combination of both. And that should be able to help you to consistently exceed your goals, meet and exceed your goals without without burning yourself out, without kind of losing motivation or momentum. All right, I hope you found at least one of those three tips helpful. So um, I wanna share a little bit more like updates, just brief updates on what's going on with myself and grad school fem touring. So I, I mentioned one of them earlier that I am getting a new website and I hope that those of y'all that have been consistently listening to the podcast will also check out the site. The site is gradschoolfemtouring.com. If you go now, it's probably not ready. So I would recommend you wait until um, early next week to, to check it out. Um, and I'm really excited about it because it's where I'm listing kind of all of my offerings um, for now. It, you know, some of the offerings might change later, but what I'm kind of doing in terms of my solopreneur business offerings, both kind of freebies, you know, free offerings and also paid offerings. I want it to be a combination because I want to make sure that I can consistently offer free, useful content so that if you don't have any money um, to, to put towards supporting my business, that that's okay too, that you simply going in and joining my, my mailing list and, you know, following me on social media that's support enough for me. So um, check out the website next week, gradschoolfemtouring.com. The other thing that goes with that is getting a new logo. So I'm going to be working on, um, on incorporating this new logo um, and rolling it out slowly across my different platforms. So don't be surprised and don't be startled if you see a new image um, for the podcast or a new logo on kind of the different platforms that I use. It's still me. <laughs> it's still the same content. It's still about grad school. It's just kind of an updated logo. And then um, 
the other thing I wanted to mention is if you are on Instagram, um, following me on Instagram, you'll notice that I have my link tree with all my different kind of links to support, to support the podcast and to support me. And um, one of the things that I've added is a uh, freebie. And so my first, hopefully of many, my first freebie is the grad school fem touring resource kit. And it's uh, 10 pages of exactly what I said, like resources. It has productivity tools, tips, handouts, uh, worksheets, you know, everything, well, not everything, but several things to help you in your grad school preparation journey. So if you're interested in applying to grad school or if you're currently navigating in the middle of grad school, definitely check it out. Um, I think uh, there's just gonna be at least one thing or a couple of things on there that you'll find helpful. And then last but not least, I am starting an email list. Why am I starting an email list? Because um, for some of y'all, you only really hear from me by listening to my podcast every week or by following me on social media. But one thing that I'm realizing is that some social media accounts are, sometimes they go down, um, they're inconsistent. Sometimes the way that, um, what's it called? The algorithm works, makes it so that you don't see my posts. So you don't see my information. And so I wanna be able to have an opportunity to consistently be in communication with my followers and listeners about new things. Um, new things can be a new podcast episode. It could be a new freebie. It could be a new webinar. It could be a new blog post because I am going to start to write blogs um, too to help you. And um, in terms of kind of giving you a reason to even sign up for the, the newsletter or the email that I'm going to be sending regularly, um, I want it to be useful for you. So first thing you're going to do is as soon as you sign up for my email uh, list or my newsletter, you're going to get that freebie. You're going to get that resource kit, the grad school fem tree resource kit. And then after that, beginning probably two weeks from now, I'm going to start to every week send an email with a tip, with a resource, with a strategy. Most of them are related to productivity tools and um, productivity, anything related to organizational skills, just to help you kind of get your work done. So a little bit more of what you heard today going to be that. I mean, I have a lot of fun personally researching this kind of stuff and looking up different uh, platforms, different strategies, trying them out on myself, seeing what works, asking other people what works for them, because I know not everybody works in the same way that I do. So every week there will be a new kind of tool strategy tip um, that will hope hopefully help you again, navigate your grad school journey. So Hopefully that's reason enough for you to join my email list. You'll be able to join the email list by either going to my link tree link on Instagram or by checking out my new website, gradschoolfemtouring.com next week. Again, I repeat, if you go to it now, it's probably going to look old and clunky, but by, um, by Monday of next week, I should have a kind of fully, um, what is it? Fully decked out new website for you to check out and sign up for my email list. Those are all my updates. Happy to hear your feedback. Um, I love hearing from my listeners and I will talk to you all next week. All right. Thanks so much for joining me in the grad school fem touring podcast. If you liked what you heard, please rate this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere you tune in. You can also support the podcast by donating to my Patreon page, Anchor page, or Venmo account, which is at Grad School Fem Touring. If you have questions or episode topics, you can contact me by sending me a DM on Instagram, sending me an email to gradschoolfemtouring at gmail.com sending me a voice message on Anchor, or sending me a message via my personal website at eventmartinezvu.com. Until next time.